Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks, and today we are going to take a look at the most common problem that beginning hobbyists have with Lionel's 027 remote turnouts. And uh, so let me demonstrate the problem here. I'm going to turn some power on, and we are getting power from the track. And um, so the first thing is, if I turn the power up, you hear the switch motor humming there. I don't know if you can hear it on the video. So I'm not doing anything to it, but the switch motor is humming. And the other problem I'm having is if I manually switch it, well, look, it switches back. Okay, so obviously there's something wrong with my switch. Well, no, actually there's not anything wrong with your switch, uh, or as we specifically say, turnout. Um, and why do I call it a turnout? Turnout's the specific term. Hobbyists, there's a lot of terminology in our hobby that is very ambiguous. So for example, a lot of folks call these a switch, but of course, you know, the controller is also a switch. And uh, so as a matter of fact, I could say that I want to switch the switch that switches the switch that switches the track that the train is on. Then you can see that I want to call this a turnout to be a little bit more specific. All right. So what we have here, we've got uh, the controllers working fine. And the problem I was having over here, if you look, although this one's broken, I've got three regular track pins in here. This interferes with the non-derailing feature that is built in to these Lionel turnouts. Whether it's a modern era one like this one, these were built from 1970 up to uh, the, the discontinuing of 027 track for fast track, or whether it looks like this, the post-war model, the 1122. All of these uh, have the same feature with one exception that I'm going to talk about in just a moment. And what they all have is this automatic non-derailing feature that requires one of these, a plastic or fiber insulated track pin. I actually need two of these for the turnout. One here and one here, here and here. Nowhere else, nothing on this side, here and here. And the purpose of this is the this section of rail is insulated from the rest of the track. A normal 027 track, the metal ties connect the two outside rails, the common, together. But here there's no power going to this part here. These two rails are wired to the opposite sides of our switch machine motor, our solenoid. And what that does is, I'm going to throw the switch the wrong way, the turnout the wrong way, and my train comes up, and oh no, it's going to derail because the track is thrown the wrong way. Well, no, it's not. Once the ray of the wheel completes the circuit, the metal wheel completes the circuit from this outside rail where there's power to this one that's insulated, it completes the circuit and sends power to the proper side of the solenoid. So now it's thrown against me this way. i throw the power up a little more, and the same thing. Thus, a non-derailing switch. So where the problem comes in is if I put in regular track pins here and here, it feeds mo power to the switch motor. Not only does that defeat my non-derailing feature, but it makes the switch want to throw constantly. You can burn out your switch motor and it can cause erratic operation. So again, we have our non-derailing feature. This is built in to all Lionel 027 switches, whether it's an 027 curve or an 042 curve, that were made in the modern era that look like this. And if we're talking about the post-war era, uh, a, a turnout that looks like this, you've got your lantern up here, this 1122, all of these that are made from 1953 to the end of the post-war era, again, you need to have these pins. There is one exception, and that is a 1122 that looks like this. This is the 1952 version of the 1122. 
This one does not require insulating pins. The reason for this is our non-derailing feature is built into the turnout. If you look at the outside rail right there and right there, it's plastic insulator. So this part of the rail is insulated. Likewise on this side, right here, right here, this part of the rail is insulated. So unlike the others that insulate this middle section, the 1952 version of the 1122 insulates here and here. You use regular track pens on either side. Lionel found that this was not the best design. It creates more dead spots in the middle uh, and doesn't give quite as much time for the train to operate the non-derailing feature. You lose an inch, which at higher speeds, it's quite a bit of a time. So by moving it out to here, that gives you an extra inch for the wheels to hit and turn it in the right direction. This switch was also redesigned in 1953. Uh, notice the shape of the switch housing here is more of a square than the later version. This version, you can run F3s, Jeep 7s, and other large um, O27 locomotives. This one you cannot. An F3's fuel tank will catch on this, so that's another reason for the redesign. So. If you're looking at a post-war 1122, look at the outside rails or the shape of the housing. And um, you generally want to avoid the 1952 version. Uh, the 1953 and later works better, has um, the more reliable non-derail feature, and you can run more locomotives and longer cars without having that problem. So there's this, the number one problem that I see. Uh, people on the internet having problems with their O27 turnouts. The simple solution is these two insulated track pins that go here and here. If you don't have any of these, uh, a wood toothpick works in a pinch. It's not a permanent solution though because the rail can move uh, and short out eventually across there, whereas the fiber pins, the plastic pins, in addition to being insulated here, have a small ridge right here that keeps the rails from touching one another, even if you push the track all the way in. So I hope you like the video. Uh, like it, share it, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, and come back and see our next video here on Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Until then, this is Mike signing off, and happy railroading.